I'm Bill Wong, and I'm speaking today with Mark Litke of Aurora Flight Sciences. And we're going to find out about uh, a flying chunk of styrofoam, actually. <laughs> Could you tell us a little bit about uh, the company first? So Aurora Flight Sciences is uh, a small business. Uh, we have about 400 employees. Um, we're kind of spread out into four business sectors. Um, two of our manufacturing sectors are in West Virginia and Mississippi, and then our headquarters is in Manassas, Virginia. Um, and then our R&D branch is a smaller office of about 40 people out of Cambridge, Massachusetts. So could you tell me a little bit about uh, this styrofoam airplane, the Skate? <laughs> well, absolutely. Um, so what Skate is, is essentially, um, it, it developed from a design concept of what it would take to fly autonomous missions through an urban environment. Um, the idea being that a small platform flies through uh, your any day street, right, and there's stoplights and there's wires and there's telephone poles, and could it avoid those autonomously, right? The idea, is, the idea was kind of how a bee flies, right? Mm -hmm. A bee just moves. Um, so what happened with Skate was we developed the platform to carry the sensor for that research, and this has evolved into, well, you know, the, the platform was actually very successful, it was very well designed, maybe we can roll with that as a product. Mm -hmm. So so Skate as itself has evolved from that to uh, now we're marketing it as a product for everything from a sport enthusiast, a hobbyist, to university research at the, um, as a simple model up to a, a very technical, um, fully man-packable tactical system for like a special forces operator. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's, it's a very diverse and versatile platform. Okay. Could you tell us a little bit about the aircraft itself? Yeah, so um, Skate is a basically a one by one aspect ratio. Um, it's made out of a expanded polypropylene foam. So the actual body of the airframe is a is an airfoil. Mm -hmm. um, the, the the polypropylene foam is uh, a very durable, very rigid, uh, very resilient foam. Um, the reason we chose this is because um, one of the lessons learned we've had from operators in the field is when something breaks, they have to send it back to fix it. Now with EPP. What happens is if this tears, it tears along the cell lines of the foam. So you can essentially super glue it back together and it's good to go <laughs> just like it was before you started flying it. So um, that is, you know, from a design concept and a utility, it is really great. The whole system weighs two pounds. So hmm. what we have is a completely modular backpackable system that weighs only two pounds. So any guy, any soldier can carry it. Um, they don't have to give up one say bullets or food for another asset, right? Everything, they can just add this on and keep going. It uses vector thrust. There is no moving control surfaces like ailerons or flaps or rudder, anything like that. Um, it's all done with uh, two motor pods that do vector thrust. So it's, uh, it's a pretty interesting design. Um, the system itself is completely autonomous. Mm -hmm. So there's a ground station, so you can program waypoints, you can fly an autonomous mission, just launch it, hand launch it, and uh, start the mission and you can fly any sort of pattern, racetracks, figure eights, whatever you wanted to do. Yeah. So this is um, our payload pod. Uh, what we've done is create a modular architecture where the payload pod is truly a payload. There's nothing that the airplane needs to fly that comes out of here. Everything else is embedded in the airframe. So as you can see, this is a dual EO camera pod, so forward-looking and downward-looking EO. We also do a forward-looking and sideward-looking pod. We've done an infrared camera pod and actually an HD pod, so we can record in HD. Um, this is the battery connection, so the battery connects, uh, get in there, like that. So this is, uh, this is about a 45 minute, 2100 milliamp battery, three cells, lithium polymer. Um, so this sets on top of the airframe, and basically, totally modular so these clips clip into the airframe and it's a quick release pod so these are hot swappable um, power and control out to the motors and it comes out of here um, this is the motor pod so basically this is essentially just a, an RC based motor so this is a hacker motor with a, a high-tech servo and this is um, if you unscrew this, this is how you screw the props on so the props become fixed. The interesting thing about this is that these two magnets here are what connects it to the airframe. So in the event of a landing, um, this lands and these pop off the airframe and that's kind of a conservation of energy type thing, right? It allows the energy to dissipate as you, as you uh, do a deep stall landing. So these are our vertical fins. Um, these slide in and out of the back of the airframe. Uh, again, there's no moving control surfaces here, so you would normally see on a real airplane, you see rudder, rudders here or, or an elevator in the middle. Um, with the vector thrust, we don't need to do that, so these become very, very easy to carry around, very light. Um, if this tears, super glue it back together. It's, the EPP foam is actually uh, 
people say styrofoam, but it's a, it's a very, very well-made foam. So this is the uh, whole airframe of skate. We only have one motor on, but um, I wanted to highlight a little bit about the modularity of skate. So the, the uh, like I said before, the motor pods are magnetically attached, so they just clip on and off like that. So in the event of a crash or a deep stall landing or anything, these just come right off, and that preserves the motors. The uh, payload pod comes off with just a few clips like that, so everything is in the payload here. The fins slide out like this. And then this here is kind of what gives the, the airframe its stiffness, so it's a stiffening rod. But what we do is we pop it out of here and it slides into this slot. All right, so there's one on each side. And those slide into the slots. And then this folds up like a quiver. So this you can put on the side of a backpack, you can stow it with straps. Um, you can put it in a sleeve. We've, we have a, it basically looks like a tent bag or a, a folding chair bag that this goes in. And you can uh, a collapsible strap and uh, this is it. It's totally rugged, totally rigid. You can stand on this. Um, it's spring loaded so it pops right out to where you want to go. And, uh, it takes about two minutes to assemble. Um, anybody could assemble it in two minutes. Uh, it's, it's just the modularity and ease. It's quick. Quick deploy, quick retrieval. That's the idea. So, so the systems run autonomously. What kind of uh, microcontroller system do you have on board? Uh, so we do an in-house autopilot. So everything we've done is a paparazzi software-based, uh, open-source autopilot. Mm -hmm. um, it's all in-house. We have a full-up pedo system. We have an inertial reference unit on there, which actually um, allows us to have three flight modes. Uh, the first flight mode is just a manual what we call stick to servo mode. That would be just like any RC aircraft where you're flying hands on. It's exactly what the inputs say, is what the motors do. Um, we have the other ascent is the, the fully autonomous mode, so it's hands off. And then we have kind of a blended solution where the inertial reference unit kind of augments the uh, the operator, and it kind of it, it can it can it can limit your pitch and roll, so mm -hmm. you can't get in too much trouble. It it kind of keeps you stable. So this is our ruggedized hand controller. Um, this is canned video, so this is recorded video that was actually on air from the airplane. Um, the idea being here is that this is connected through a quick disconnect to a backpack, right? And, and your radio box and your hub box, everything already stored in the backpack, and you can actually fly the airplane hands heads down meaning through the video uh, from this controller. This is where you select your three flight modes, so you have manual mode, augmented mode, and autonomous mode. So this is actually kind of the second concept design. We had originally had a block, and what we've done is refine this to be a little more contour, um, and that this tablet can slide in and out, so you could take your information with you. That's the idea. So this is what you would fly manually. This is the tough book base. So this is the the, where you do the, any autonomous waypoint navigation. So um, this would be a map of, uh, this is actually a test range up in Massachusetts, and so you can see there's a home dot, that's where you'd set yourself. So in the event of a lost link mm -hmm. uh, with the airplane, the airplane automatically knows to go back to home. So this is where you would do um, all your route planning. Um, if you switch this, this would be where your camera is. We don't have it on, we're inside. But uh, you can swap back and forth between looking at the camera or just setting the autonomous mission. So this would be like your primary flight display on a 737, right? Everything is presented here, and it has basically a telemetry-based status here. So it says no fix, 12.2 on the volts on the battery, but this is where your information is. So that's where your telemetry goes. So you can fly autonomous through the tough book or manual through the controller. So it's a pretty wide range of applications for uh, different users of Skate, depending on how you wanted to fly, what kind of information you wanted to get. The uh, interface that you've developed, is this something that uh, researchers can take and enhance? Absolutely. So the benefit to using the paparazzi software is uh, uh, a lot of the initial interest in Skate came from MIT, um, some other universities that are looking for a platform to, to do like basically graduate research on aircraft controls, aerodynamics, stability and control. Um, some of the core you know, disciplines within our, our airspace, aerospace engineering. Um, so that actually is, is uh, a really big attraction for, for researchers because you know, they can do whatever they want. We give them the, the tools and, and if they understand paparazzi, they can go in there and tweak it and, and do whatever they need to do to uh, do their research. Mm -hmm. Now, in terms of uh, some of the other characteristics of the aircraft itself, uh, how far can it go? How fast? How long? Um, so right now, um, we're, we're, 
we are getting about 45 minutes of endurance. Uh, you can go three to five kilometers downrange from your home base, depending on what kind of radios you use. Um, we use a 2.4 gigahertz control link, just like an RC standard. Mm -hmm. uh, we use a 900 megahertz link for the telemetry. Um, and then we use a 5.8 gigahertz link for analog video. Um, you know, down the road, uh, digital, digital video would be a, a, a huge advancement for skate. Um, finding the right tools and the right equipment to do that. Um, so for 45 minutes and five kilometers, it's, it's a pretty robust mission. Um, we've set a target for skate mm -hmm. uh, for a half a pound payload, uh, one hour endurance. Mm. So that, that's, that's, a, that's a benchmark that we're shooting for. Right now we can do with a half pound payload, 45 minutes, depending on the mission. Um, a lot of hover, a lot of forward flight. I mean, like I said, the, the airframe is an airfoil, so you get lift off the airframe when you fly it. Um, but if you're going to do it in an urban and tight environment where you're doing a lot of hovering, uh, you trade endurance for, you know, utility at that point. So, um, but we'll get there, I think. An hour and a half a pounds is achievable. Excellent. If people would like to find out more about the skate, where can they find it online? So they can go to uh, www.aurora.aero. It's A-E-R-O. Um, the skate brochure, everything is uh, everything you need to do is on there, and my phone number is on there. So if uh, <laughs> if you have more questions, you can give me a call, and uh, I'll I'll do my best to answer them. Great, I appreciate it. Absolutely, thank you.